I'm willing to uh, acknowledge that maybe in some ways I don't get it, but I listen, when I hear these words, I, I feel like women are being put down in, in, in ways that are, are really bad. Yeah, ab sure. ab absolutely. And then, yeah. I, I think that there's no question that the rhetorical contempt that is aimed at women is lamentable, should be talked about, should be confronted, and should be articulated, without question. What's interesting is that, when I said earlier, and, and I have now a chance to, uh, to explicate it a bit, is that the virtue, if we can call it that, of hip-hop is that you, ain't, you don't really have to guess. If there is lethal viewpoint and sentiment expressed against women, which we should oppose, which we should talk about, which we should explore, which we should explain, which we should get at the roots of, or justify? I mean, I... No, no, not justify. I mean, you can, you can justify. Like I'm saying sure there's no justification in my mind for it. But what's interesting is that, if, which is what I mean by we don't quarantine the crazy to hip-hop, there are ways in which polite society reinforces negative values toward women, but they don't call them bitch, hoe, skeezer, slut, chicken head, hood rat. I'm not suggesting that bitch, hoe, skeezer, hood rat, and chicken head are not offensive. They're profoundly offensive. What's interesting is that but if we take moral comfort in, aha, we've now isolated the strain of virulent misogyny in hip-hop, and therefore we've gotten at the root of it. No, we've gotten a powerful manifestation of it that needs to be dealt with. But what we've done at the same time is avoid the, the, the way in which sentiments expressed against women are pervasive in the society. This is why I mentioned, and I love the black church. I'm an ordained Baptist minister. I feel about the black church the way Robert McAfee Brown said he felt about the church. If it wasn't for the, it's like Noah's Ark. If it wasn't for the storm on the outside, you couldn't stand the thing on the inside. So the church is a is a is a institution that deals with the funkiness, but it has its own kind of funkiness. Now, I'm not suggesting that uh, there's a parallel between the virulent, degrading emphasis upon women's bodies in hip hop and what goes on in church. But I am saying this: that if you're 75 percent of an institution that you can do everything but run, and your money supports it, you are essentially an ecclesiastical hoe or a theological bitch at that level without the explicit expression and articulation. That doesn't justify. I'm not a person who's trying to justify expressions of de degradation against women at any level. Having said that, I also know that what Mr. Banner said is interesting in this sense. When you use the word bitch, many women use the word bitch in among themselves. Men don't have the same register of access to that word that women do, except in hip-hop, it, it does happen. So there's not a parallel. Yeah. Black I, men using the N-word is different than men using the B-word, because now you're dealing with women who are being degraded by your emphasis, and no matter how cool or down you are as a black man, the B-word means something that is virulent and vicious and, and, and problematic. But at the same time, you have men calling each other this. So that means that there's some terminological slippage going on there. I'm looking it's forward to hearing... I'm looking forward to hearing from some women on that point. Oh, absolutely. I women, yeah, absolutely. I think women need to absolutely on that. Uh, but I'm not defend. That's why I'm saying I'm not defending the vehement denunciation of women at all. I don't. I don't card it. I don't. Uh, I don't uh, in any way uh, concede that. I'm simply saying, however, that if you ban the B word altogether, you don't even hear Queen Latifah saying, "Don't you call me a bitch or a hoe." And I'm saying that there are women who, are, who find that degrading, and there are many men who find the B word degrading as well. And I think that's what we have to put forth. Okay. I, I was just asking permission, the chairman, to briefly, Mr. Miller, could respond. Yes, uh, I just think that we, as people that come from the street, you either right or you wrong. And I just think right now, I, like I said, I want to apologize to all the women out there, everybody that I could did, I was honestly wrong. And I'm going to step forward and try to Back in my day, we used to fight if you say something bad about somebody's mama. And I think my mama is a beautiful black queen, and we got to start putting that in. I want to stop right. justifying why is it right or wrong. It's, it's wrong. And I can honestly say it's wrong, and I'm going to do everything I can. And, and me, I didn't have somebody to pat me on the back to tell me, but what I can do and what I will do, I'm making sure my son hmm. would not do He's never said a cuss word. He never talked bad about a woman in the record. And I think if we start growing up, and start really understanding how to take our game to the next level and take action. Not worry about what we did in the past right now, where we going at. And I think the most of what we going at right now, the change is coming. It's not going to be quick. It's not going to be happen overnight. But people are starting to wake up saying, you know what, I want something better out of life. And that's what I can offer. When you talk about women, because you, you, you either have a mother 
a sister, a woman that you're sleeping with, that you would have to say, you know what, I don't want people talking about them like that. I don't want nobody talking about mine like that. And I don't want myself. And I want to grow up, and I, I'm starting right now. Saying that I can tell you what I'm doing and as an individual. I'm going to take advantage of that and not be a part of doing that because they're definitely talking about somebody, mama, sister, uh, uh, wife. So I'm definitely going to do my part, and I think we shouldn't call women bees, and we shouldn't call them, and we should grow up. If we did it for a while, we didn't know, and we learned to understand, we need to grow up. And I think that's the most important thing that we're going to figure out today. If we grow up, we're going to be all right. Thank you. I'm sure we now recognize the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Gonzalez, for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. <coughs> or thereabouts. <laughs> Mr. Miller, I, I think your your last uh, response probably captures what we're really trying to do here. Yes. Uh, about legislating it's almost impossible to do anything. I think what the chairman seeks to do in this dialogue is to raise the consciousness of the producers, the distributors, yes. and the artists to the influence that you have. Now, you're speaking prospectively and into the future. I think Mr. Crump was disagreeing with you because yeah. body language surely was that he did mm. not agree with your statements. So I only can assume that the distributors, right, well, the producers, yeah. the writers, the artists are probably going to continue along the same lines. So I just, but we all agree on this. Yeah. You influence people. Exactly. All right. And I understand that it's reflecting a condition in America that is unacceptable. Yes. But you're presenting it in a vehicle called entertainment. Yes. You're trivializing it. And when I say you, I don't mean you directly. I'm talking about a whole industry. I'm yes, talking sir. about the artists and so on. You glamorize lifestyles that you here today are saying should be condemned. And that young black men should seek and aspire to something else, even though they may not have that opportunity. Yes. What I don't see, though, is that in the lyrics and in the videos, which is, is another issue, I don't see that suddenly a solution, an answer, a pathway is being described. What you're describing, Mr. Crump, is the present state of affairs without giving hope to a different world or an out. What you do privately, I will say, sir, is commendable and admirable. But I say what you do publicly yeah. is viewed by so many more people, and you influence and impact so many more people by your public persona than what you do privately. And I, I'm, I'm saying that in good faith to you. I guess what I'm really wanting to ask you all is, is this entertainment? And I want to ask Dr. Dyson, for all the young people that view these videos and listen to this music, is it really going to encourage and lead them to deal with a present situation that needs a discussion and needs solutions, or are they going to lead them to your classroom, which is a much more legitimate forum to have a meaningful debate on this and for us to be legislating. That's the real issue here. We are all over the map on this. We're trying to say that this, the music and the lyrics reflect a condemnable uh, condition. We all agree on that. My God, I, I mean, we're not going to go back into our histories or even Mr. Russ, where we all started in the early days and where we are today. Everyone agrees on it. What we're saying is, what are we going to do about this entertainment forum that is promoting an understanding and is perpetuating a present situation that will remain the future because it really does have that kind of influence. And I'll start with uh, Mr. Crump. Thank you very much. <laughs> First of all, one of the problems is in most cases you guys don't listen to our music, so you don't know what I've actually done. My second single, first of all, my first single was called Like a Pimp. Rugged, rough, this, that, and the other. I had prayed before I actually got on, and I told God, I said, God, if you give me an opportunity to make it out of the hood without drugs, without having to go to somebody and get fronted some money, that I'll try to change my life. Right after that, I got a deal. I did Like a Pimp. I actually put my career on the line by coming out with a song called Cadillac on 22. We made a video, and, and I will quote a half of a verse. God, I know that we pimp. God, I know that we wrong. God, I know I should talk about more in all of my songs. I know these kids are listening. I know I'm here for a mission. 
but it's so hard to get them with 22 rims on the day. So in me saying that, I put that video out. During that same album, I had a, um, I gave $50,000 for scholarship. The truth is, I put that music out there. I made the effort. My career went down, down, down. When I went back to the music that put me on, because what you have to understand, people put us on for a certain type of music. And for us to get up once we get rich, that's sort of like treason to America. You call them treason to the same people that put you on. What I will say, and this ties in to um, um, what she said, it, it's not about music. If you want to talk about degrading women, I think it, 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 it causes more of a problem to have a little bitty girl on the sideline with a short skirt jumping up and down cheering for a football player running the football when her being half naked on the sideline has nothing to do with him running the football or beer commercials where women have on bikinis and they're selling beer and Mac walking in McDonald's with a cleavage open to sell a, 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 a sandwich, exactly. I think that's the bigger, bigger problem. But what I want all of you guys to take home is the fact that people know that young black men don't have anybody to protect them. So we will always put the drug problem, the gun problem, the degradation of women on young black men because we don't even protect ourselves. And I will say this. Like, no, let me interrupt you one second. So my time is going to be up. But, and I appreciate where you're coming from. But what you just said, if people are really listening, is it's the almighty dollar. No, it's, no, now wait a minute. I think you went to I, what I think is more substantive approach, giving young people hope, giving them direction for what you're saying. Your career was tanking. And the only way you went up. Now let me tell you that it's all part of my, but it's all part. It's, a, it's all a part of my life. No, this is all no, part. This, that is the problem. All part of my life. That's the problem. And what I want you to know it's is that you I, it's yourself, and, and that's that I make is that I made an effort. But the truth is, they come effort. down to it, regardless. They with it, right. regardless of what we, regardless of what we want to say. If I do not keep myself current. It don't matter how many how many CDs I put out, how much I stand on the corner and talk about positivity, nobody will hear. At least with me being put in the position that I am, I'm even here and have the ability to take up for my people. If I'm not current, it don't matter Mr. no way. Mr. Crumb, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you, have you completed your question? Well, I wanted the other members, uh, again, I mean, it, I think what the chairman is attempting to accomplish here, and, and this is a step in the right direction, but if, if we have everyone simply saying nothing's going to change, and that is the concern in Mr. Miller and Dr. Yeah. Dyson. Well, uh, well, what I, what I want to tell you guys is, uh, uh, like the congressman said,